Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in again this week on the Supplement Institute. I am Kyle Johnson, your friendly neighborhood biochemist. This week we're going to be talking about a vitamin that really needs no introduction because I guarantee you've heard of it, vitamin D. You know it as the sunlight vitamin, but hey, before we dive in, if you found these videos to be helpful, we would love it if you would hit that like button, the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification icon so that you never miss our videos, and honestly to help us bring you more videos because we do love doing this and we're trying to create an entire library of every supplement in the book. Now with that said, let's dive in this week on the Supplement Institute, we're doing vitamin D. All right, guys, before we get started, I need to say two things that we say on almost every video. One, definitely, but two, almost every video. Number one, I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on the internet. If you have any questions about a supplement or you're worried about contraindications that you might have with that supplement, please, please, please consult your physician or your nutritionist to see if you actually, actually should add that supplement to your regimen. And number two, on every Supplement Institute video, we try to cover four different things. Number one, what is it? Number two, what does it do? Number three, do I even need it? And number four, if I do need it, how much should I take? Let's dive in on vitamin D. So vitamin D, what is it? Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, and it's one of a number of micronutrients that our bodies actually really need to survive and thrive, really. If you don't have enough vitamin D, you will eventually start to notice it for many reasons, which we will get into. Vitamin D is important for immune health, your bone health, even your mood and other things that your body needs. And interestingly, vitamin D actually qualifies as a hormone. Yes, a hormone. And that should make you perk up and pay attention to this video because that's pretty important to make sure you're getting enough of a hormone, right? So let's dive in. Vitamin D comes in multiple different forms. You're likely familiar with at least two of them. Vitamin D3, which is known as cholecalciferol, this is the kind you get from the sunlight. There's vitamin D2, which is called ergocalciferol, this is a form you find in plants. And then there's calcitriol, which is the active form that our bodies end up creating and using. So why is vitamin D, or more specifically D3, known as the sunlight vitamin? Because when you're getting sunlight, right, those are photons and radiation, which are ozone protects us from, right, theoretically speaking. The photons aren't giving us vitamin D, so how does that work? Because it's not sending down molecules of vitamin D. This happens via a reaction that our skin has when the UVB rays from the sun, as opposed to the UVA rays, the UVB rays from the sun hit our skin and cause a reaction on something known as 7-D-hydroxycholesterol, yeah, cholesterol, within our skin. When that happens, D3, cholecalciferol, is created. And then that gets transported and bound to a protein known as, ready, vitamin D binding protein. Wow, great name. It's also known as the vitamin D receptor for short. Either one works. After this, the vitamin D3 gets transported to your liver. At the liver, it gets converted to something known as calcidiol. Calcidiol is the form of D that is the storage form for your body to use. Finally, to become calcitriol, which is the active version, that's the one we want, that reaction occurs mostly, but not solely, in the kidneys. This reaction also occurs in things like your alveoli cells. Now, alveoli cells, aren't those the tiny air sacs in your lungs? That seems like it might be pretty important, and you're right, so let's talk about it. Your alveoli cells are the tiny air sacs in your lungs that allow for gas exchange, namely O2 and CO2, right? When you breathe in air, you're breathing in O2 or oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide or CO2. That gas exchange, that's happening in your alveoli cells. Now, why is that so important for the purpose of this video? That's because those very same air sacs, the alveoli cells, are where things like bacteria and viruses invade. This is one area in which vitamin D helps to act as a buffer for our immune system or a helper to our immune system. Now, as I stated previously, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So Let's talk for a second about what that means, and this might get a little bit of chemistry in there, but I think you'll find it interesting. Vitamin D, being a fat-soluble vitamin, we need fats with it in order to properly absorb it. Also, when we do absorb it, if you have excess, that gets stored in the fat stores of your body. So there's a rule in chemistry that states like dissolves like. Now, what does that mean? If you have a polar molecule, which we won't get too much into polarity of molecules, but a polar molecule will dissolve a polar molecule. 
like water dissolving salt. A nonpolar molecule can dissolve a nonpolar molecule, so that's where the like dissolves like comes in. Vitamin D being fat soluble is nonpolar because fats generally are nonpolar, right? Now, when we say nonpolar, it either means that there are no charges within the molecule or that they are so minuscule as to be negated. It doesn't really matter. So this nonpolarity being a fat soluble vitamin that vitamin D is, is the reason you find vitamin D supplements in either a fatty acid pill form that looks a little bit like an omega-3 fatty acid pill, or it'll be suspended in something like uh, medium chain triglyceride oil, which oil is a fat. All right, now with all of that stuff said, what does vitamin D actually do? Vitamin D's functions are many, but not least of which, and what we're gonna focus on right now, is its regulation in our calcium homeostasis. Uh, it's going to signal our intestines to absorb calcium into the bloodstream, and simultaneously, it's gonna signal our kidneys to stop excreting calcium. Now, once that calcium is in our body, that's where another vitamin comes in, namely vitamin K2, in order to help the calcium get to where it needs to go, but we're not gonna focus on vitamin K2 right now. Just know that a lot of times you'll supplement with vitamin D and you'll notice that it has vitamin K2 in it as well. There's good reason for that, but we'll cover that in a future video. So vitamin D is extremely important in regulating our calcium levels, and this might shock you, but without enough vitamin D, your body will actually break down our, our own bone in order to get enough calcium into our bloodstream. Now, isn't this interesting? Why would our bodies break down bone in order to get calcium? Isn't that what calcium's for to begin with? Like, that's like knocking down a building for the wood and then using the wood to build the same building back. This is kind of weird. Well, calcium does a lot more than just build bone. Calcium is an ion, much like sodium is, right? Or chloride. You get sodium chloride, you join them together, and that cancels the charges, right? Calcium's the same way. It's a charged particle, and it remains charged until it's bound with something else. Because of it being charged, it's actually really integral in signaling. Things like your heartbeat, uh, your muscle movement, which we actually covered in our choline video when we talked about how choline and calcium play a role in muscle movement. Um, every neuro signaling to every body part requires calcium. So such things will actually be covered in another video that we'll do that focuses on calcium, but know that there's a lot more to calcium than just building strong bones. And there's good reason why your body would go after its own bone tissue to get enough calcium. Now, as far as how vitamin D boosts our immune system and helps it to function properly, we really have to try not to get too specific because we can get super bogged down in biochemical pathway stuff that general population, and I guarantee you, you watching this video, it, you just don't really need to know. With that said, low serum vitamin D levels are associated with several risk factors, including, but not limited to, increased risk of developing psoriasis, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis, sepsis, respiratory infection, and yes, COVID-19. All right, for our third topic, do you need it? Well, that kind of depends. You might be surprised to learn this, but in the US specifically, the United States, the majority of people are vitamin D insufficient, but not necessarily deficient. There is a difference. Deficiency is higher in states that are farther north, speaking of the United States specifically. And this should be for pretty obvious reasons, right? There's many months in the year, we call them winter, early spring, late fall into winter, where the earth on its axis tilts away from the sun. So you end up getting a lot less UVB rays from the sun, which is what's helping us to create the vitamin D naturally. So for anywhere from four to six months of the year, maybe longer depending on where you are particularly, uh, depending on where you live, many people create way too little vitamin D during those times. All right, now how much should you take? This is kind of where your situation is personal and you'll need to do some thinking on your own. But as a general guideline, let's talk about that. During the late fall to early spring, your need is higher. If you spend more time indoors, your need is higher. So the average dose is anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 IUs, which stands for international units. I know you're used to seeing milligrams or grams for supplements. Don't worry about the unit of measurement. Your supplement will be measured in international units, and you want to take between 1,000 and 2,000 IUs, depending on your situation. One more fun fact. Research has shown that sufficient vitamin D levels can actually normalize our testosterone levels. Now, before you get carried away, note that I said normalize, not make you super jacked. We are not taking you beyond super physiological levels of your testosterone. We're simply going to normalize them, assuming they aren't currently normal. Vitamin D, being in sufficient levels, can help to normalize testosterone levels. One more thing to note before we go. 
If you have darker skin, meaning your skin has more melanin in it, your body's natural defenses against the sun's UV rays are higher, which means if you are relying on sunlight alone for your vitamin D status, you actually need to make sure you're getting a lot more sunlight, especially if you are currently living further from the equator. So as a general rule, the further from the equator you live, combined with the time of year that it is, combined with how long you spend indoors versus outdoors, all of these things increase your need for vitamin D supplementation. Thanks for tuning in this week on the Supplement Institute. I am Kyle Johnson, your friendly neighborhood biochemist. Leave us a comment if you have a question. Give us a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.